Now here's the email that was sent to John Podesta about the outlook of nuclear power in the United States. It certainly seemed like nuclear power was becoming obsolete in this email. This is memorandum for John Podesta from John Deutsch and Richard Lester. Subject, Outlook for U.S. Nuclear Power, dated August 13 of 2014. We have given consideration to following two questions. Number one, what is the likely attrition in the U.S. nuclear fleet in the near and long term? And two, what measures might the U.S. government take to reverse this trend? The views expressed are our own, but we believe that they are in line with informed and realistic industry experts. Since we understand your interest in these questions, we are sharing our answers with you. In sum, the near-term longer outlook for U.S. nuclear power is poor for reasons summarized below. There is little the USG can do to influence the cipher. There is little the USG can do to influence decisively the outcome over the next decade, because this will mainly be determined by the economic competitiveness of nuclear units in many markets under prevailing state regulatory provisions. We have a number of suggestions for actions the USG might take into account soon, creating an enabling environment for nuclear generation over the longer term. What is the outlook? Anticipated shutdown to 2020, four nuclear reactors have been closed since 2012, and Vermont Yankee will also close by the end of 2014 for a total of 4.2 gigawatt capacity. At least 10 more units are at risk of closing during the next decade, including four in Illinois, four in New York, one in Ohio, and one in New Jersey. Many factors influence closure decisions, including anticipated electricity demand, misalignment of base load capacity, market prices and dispatch rules, projected growth in nuclear O&M capital costs, and perhaps more stringent safety requirements in response to Fukushima. So there could be more and a few closings than 10 noted here. Anticipated additions to 2020, five nuclear units are under construction, two at Voctel Station in Georgia, two at the Virgil Summer Station in South Carolina, and one at Watts Bar, Tennessee. These reactors will add about 6 gigawatts capacity by the end of the decade. No one expects any additional new plants to enter service before 2020, so the nuclear capacity in 2020 will be about the same as today at 95 to 100 gigawatts. The EIA in its AEO 2014 reference case projects 98 gigawatts. 3. Retirements beyond 2020. The EIA AEO 2014 reference case assumes to additional retirements during the period of 2020 to 2040. This is unrealistic private communication because it assumes that the 50 gigawatts of capacity reaching 60 years of age between 2030 and 2040 will be granted a further 20 year operating life extensions and that the OM costs remain flat. But these aging reactors may well continue to experience OM costs. These have recently been increasing at 3 to 4 percent per year which would likely mean a drop in nuclear generation and the high capacity factors that nuclear units have enjoyed. Also it is unlikely that all eligible reactors will receive or even apply permission to operate out to 80 years of life. The EIA has an accelerated nuclear retirement case that projects no operating license extensions beyond 60 years and has 36 GWE retirements, about one third of the existing fleet between 2029 and 2040. Even if this case could prove optimistic, the main point here is that even with the resolution of the near term problems caused by dispatch rules and an unrecognized value of capacity there, remains a looming prospect that post-2020 retirements should be addressed. Now, commercial prospects for new LWR construction estimates of the overnight cost to build a nuclear reactor in the U.S., including owner's costs, are about $5,000 per kilowatt in 2014 dollars. On the same basis, a natural gas combined cycle plant will cost around 1,100 kilowatt. So this translates to about 7.5 cents per kilowatt per hour, 4 cents kilowatt per hour natural gas generation at 4 MCF of natural gas. The credit for carbon free electricity generation requires to bridge this gap will be very large 
and there are many other opportunities in the economy to reduce carbon emission at lower costs. Even assuming successful completion of the Voctol and summer reactors, new LWR construction starts are unlikely if the gas price remains at its current low level as anticipated for at least the next decade. Some believe costs are much lower overseas. We have done a recent review cost in China, Finland, India and Korea. But our impression is that under a common set of assumptions, the cost of LWRs are rising everywhere. What about this new small modular technology, SMR? The DOE is supporting the supplements of SMR with the objective of mass producing many small reactors at low cost and getting them together as needed to meet demands. It is an audacious idea instead of pursuing even larger units to achieve lower costs. Mass produce many smaller units in a factory and sending and achieving low costs through production scaling economies and learning. Now this was Bill Gates plan. He wanted to put many nuclear reactors in every neighborhood. Imagine. So you got little nuclear waste tanks in every neighborhood. Ain't that pretty? This may succeed but the following needs to be kept in mind. Development, licensing and demonstration of a new reactor type is both expensive and it takes time. Over 10 billion in 10 years. There is no plan for how these costs will be shared between the government and the private sector. There is also little technical evidence to support the basic There is also little technical evidence to support the basic hypothesis. So it's imprudent to adopt SMR as a solution to the impending post-2030 nuclear plant retirement problems of today. Other technology opportunities it is important to the U.S. to remain engaged in nuclear energy even if its future is cloudy. There are many opportunities, private communication, where U.S. interests and capabilities could lay the groundwork for a nuclear 2.0 future. These suggestions are in the next section. If what must the U.S. do? For the next term, we suggest the two actions, one and two below. For the longer term, we offer six actions, three and eight, to establish a technological and governance basis for domestic and global nuclear expansion in the long term. Strengthening FERC to determination to assure the regional transmission organization and independent system operators, ISOs, resolve the uncertainty and capacity value and dispatch priorities so the nuclear and coal plants can more reliably estimate their future revenues and costs. Establish that policy and regulations will value existing and new nuclear generation on the same basis as other carbon free electric sources. This will give utilities and investors confidence that nuclear energy is an accepted part of the energy future of the U.S. Convene an international nuclear safety evaluation designed to establish requirements for new reactors capable of achieving expected safety levels in order to magnitude beyond the current level. 4. Continue to support the U.S. non-proliferation policy. The key elements are to ensure that U.S. is a reliable supplier, to encourage international mechanisms to provide enrichment services and stockpiles of low enriched fuel and C to avoid reprocessing of commercial spent fuel. See, because they can't, they have problems reprocessing it, so they're just going to keep making more of this nuclear waste. Establish the NRC as the global leader in licensing innovative nuclear technologies. The key elements are to create a separate NRC unit dedicated to nuclear developments. The key elements are to create a separate NRC unit dedicated to regulatory developments and licensing of innovative nuclear technologies. Encourage engagement of this unit with international nuclear development. Consorta. Accelerate the creation of a risk-based regulatory pathway for advanced technologies. Establish a clear roadmap for licensing approval of advanced technologies with well-defined milestones. Upgrade and internationalize DOE's nuclear RDAD programs. Priority areas are hybrid nuclear energy storage systems suitable for grid with high levels of intermittent generation, wind and solar, uranium recovery from seawater. Uranium recovery from seawater. Yeah, get in the Pacific Ocean. You got a lot of uranium in the sea right there. From Fukushima. Advanced water disposal technologies such as deep bore holes offer INEL and other DOE national laboratories as sites that domestic and international industry can use for development, testing, and demonstration of advanced nuclear technologies. E. Support materials, RD, and testing to validate reactor lifetime extensions beyond 60 years. 7. 
Attention to nuclear waste storage and disposal is important to establish public confidence in nuclear energy. Administration should move to implement the recommendations of the Blue Ribbon Commission on America's nuclear future. They just want to create an illusion that they got this nuclear waste under control. Private Communication, chaired by Lee Hamilton and Brent Snowcraft, that lays out a comprehensive and practical approach to nuclear waste management, and especially important steps to signal progress on the issue from reactor AFR storage for spent commercial nuclear fuel. What should be avoided? At the present time, expanding or extending the national loan guarantee is unpromising. Also, the SMR initiative is not a stage that justifies a costly crash program. It cannot be relied upon to offer a safe and economical source of electricity in the post-2025 period. We have not shared this memorandum with Ernie or others. If you would find it useful to expand these views into a more complete paper, we will do so in response to your invitation. Of course, we will be pleased to learn any reaction you may have to these ideas. John Deutsch, who is the Institute Professor, Department of Chemistry. Richard Lester, who is the Head Department of Nuclear Science and Engineering. You can find them at MIT. Edu. To John Podesta, Pizza Boy Podesta.